Uh, please welcome uh, from the government the Minister of Infrastructure, Catherine Emsetesvær. It's an honor to, to have you here. For two years ago, it was your colleague who was uh, helping us open up the, in, in uh, connection with the COP15, the United, the United uh, Union's uh, climate meeting down in, in uh, Copenhagen, and we have the meeting in, in uh, Malmö at that time. But now we have a home time, please. And uh, especially welcome to all our foreign guests. In this nice weather, you might need a warmly welcome. <laughs> As you mentioned before, at the time of the third PODCAR conference in Malmö in Sweden two years ago, the Copenhagen Climate Summit took place the same week. Then and now, Climate change is still the greatest challenge of our time. The seriousness of the climate change challenges has speeded up the pace by which new technologies are developed and adopted. In the transport area, one important challenge is to reduce and finally eliminate the emissions from fossil fuels. The Swedish government has set the target that road vehicle fleet should be independent of fossil fuels by the year 2030. This is really a big challenge. Some say it unrealistic. I say ambitious goals can be strong drivers. When Sweden 14 years ago launched the Vision Zero for traffic safety, saying that no one should be killed or seriously injured in road traffic, the reaction was the same. Today, Sweden has the world's lowest rate of people killed in road traffic. Without this Vision Zero initiative, that would not have happened. We are striving at the 2030 emission target by economic means or other measures. Subsidies to those who buy passenger cars with low emissions have proven successful. For the first time ever, the emissions from road passenger transport has decreased. We have managed to decouple emission growth from economic growth. The Swedish economy <coughs> is living proof that economic growth and concern for the environment can go hand in hand. Since 1990, Sweden has lowered its greenhouse gas emissions by nearly 20%. At the same time as the GDP has grown by about 50%. To continue on this track, we support development of new technologies, such as electric cars and the second generation biofuels. However, we have to do much more to achieve the 2030 target and meet the climate challenge. Our transport system has to become more energy efficient and we need improved technologies for vehicles and infrastructure. We need intelligent transport systems for more efficiency in all parts of the transport system. And we need to build our cities so it will be more comfortable safe and easy to walk, to bike, and to use public transportations. And we also need to develop and implement new and complementary transport systems. <laughs> complementary yeah. transport systems. Thank you systems. very much. An applause for that. <laughs> He's always talking about <coughs> this. <laughs> Pod car system could potentially be a bridge between passenger cars and conventional public transport system. If that can be achieved, pod cars will contribute substantially to the co-modality we strive for. If co-pod car systems also prove to be energy efficient, they will truly contribute to a more sustainable transport system. The last few years have brought forward both 
significant development in technology as well as implementation and operation of port cars. My first port car ferry took place earlier in Mazda City. The urban and regional public transit systems and their development are in most cases the responsibility of municipalities and regional public transport authorities. The Swedish government has launched a new legislation for public transport that will enter into force the 1st of January next year with the goal to increase the number of people choosing to use public transport. Hopefully, this new legislation will contribute to the development of the existing transit system but also open up for new options. Finally, I truly believe that this conference will contribu contribute to increase cooperation both nationally and internationally. And it is such cooperation that is so vital to the successful introduction of new technologies. So I wish you a challenging and successful conference today and for tomorrow's new life. Thank you.